praise the Lord. So uh, we will now proclaim the word of God. We will now proceed to the proclamation of the word of the Lord. And our passage this morning is a very wonderful revelation from God. One of my most favorite passages in the Bible. You can see that from James chapter 5, 13 to 18. Is anyone among you in trouble? Okay, so let us make this personal. Are you in trouble this morning? Do you have any issues? Do you have any case with the Lord? And the Bible said, if anyone among you in trouble, is there anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Are you happy this morning? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Anybody here is sick? Let them call the elders, not the senior citizens. <laughs> Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that they may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Let's pray. Father, once again, we come to you, Lord, and we seek your anointing and understanding. Because apart from you, Lord, we will never be able to understand the mystery of your words from the Bible. Lord, thank you. Thank you for special anointing and help us to understand it simply. We give you honor and praises in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This is an extension of our message last week. Remember, we were talking about the worthiness of serving God. Is serving God worthy? Is it okay? Is it worthy to serve lo the Lord? Is it all, it is worthy to be a Christian? Is it worthy to serve God in a local church? Is it worthy to read the Bible? Okay, so that is our message last week. And today we will focus on our unanswered prayer. Because there are many Christians who are so disappointed that they were serving God, they were giving their tithes, they were faithful on Sunday. And yet, when we pray, when I pray, how come that I feel I don't receive any real things? I don't receive the real, the real result of my prayer. There are more prayer requests than answered prayer. And I believe there are many Christians who are focusing on this. And that's the reason why they are disappointed. That's the reason why they stop serving God. And then they are, they are envying the non-believers who are receiving more blessings. So they said, I think I'd rather go back to my unbelieving lifestyle. All right? And that is sad because they are two earthly people. These people do not really understand the meaning of the gospel. So as we continue our message this morning, let's talk about prayer. Because prayer is our means to connect with our God the Father. If you don't pray, it means you are not connecting with God. Because the only way for you to connect with God is not to come only on Sunday or not listening. Okay, but to pray and to talk with Him and not only talking, but to listen to the voice of God. If I will just 
Let us say I will call Brother Prince. Hi, Brother Prince. How are you? How are you? How are you today? Bye. Shalom and shalom, shalom. All right. Is that okay? Prince may be saying, this is a very rude pastor. And that is our way in doing our prayer. Lord, give me this. Give me this. Give me those. Give me that. Bye. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> All right? Those are the style. Okay? So today, this morning, my brother and sisters, since there are many people who are in vacation today, <laughs> Brother Johan and Evelyn, Hans, Hannah, Michael, Joel, Jomar, all of those are in vacation. Sandra is in vacation. Welcome back our Cancun, uh, Pukar and, do you know that Pukar and Marie were in Cancun for one week? Yeah, they enjoy the beauty of Mexico. You know, yesterday we were in Maryland and we were doing our, as usual, our mission. And uh, we were so happy because of the closeness of our connection with these people. If the people from Maryland are uh, watching right now, we just want to tell you that we were so blessed for yesterday's, yesterday's our fellowship. Okay, so when we pray, my brother and sisters, when you pray, you are opening your lines, okay, lines of communication between God and you, okay? So it, that's why it is important for us to pray. So when we pray, you speak, okay? You speak. So why do you pray? Of course, you are speaking and you are presenting everything that you wanted to tell God. Those are supplications, those are petitions. And while you are speaking, God listens to your prayer. God listens to your prayer. Okay? And when you pray, this is the advice of most of the senior Christians, that you need to read the Bible. You need to open up your Bible. Or sometimes you have to ask, Lord, let me open my spirit to you. I want to open my heart and please speak to my heart. I am listening right now. You need to spend 5, 10, 20, 30, 1 hour minutes for listening to God. Because that is the moment that you are allowing God to speak to you. But the problem with many Christians, they speak more than God. As if they are the God. Amen? And then later on, they will be disappointed. How come that God didn't answer their prayer? No, because you don't allow God to speak to you. You speak too much. Tuan Tua, Sister Sarah, she can relate. <laughs> All right? So most of the time, while we are talking, we don't give God an opportunity to talk with us. It is more important to spend your time in listening than talking. Right now, it is also a moment of listening. You are listening to me, and I believe you are being convicted right now. And if you are convicted, it means the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It is a moment of listening. And this is very important, my brother and sisters. That's why some Christians are having their notes so that they will write their message from, from the Holy Spirit so that when they go back to their homes, they won't forget. They will not forget this. All right? That is important, my brother and sisters, the voice of God. Sometimes we say, God didn't listen to me. No, it is you who did not listen to God because you are paying attention on other things, okay? So when you are convicted, that's the word of God. That's the message of the Lord to you. Do not ignore when you are being convicted. Don't say, oh, pastor is talking about my life. No. Pinapatamaan ako ni Pastor. 
It is wrong. It is wrong to think that because that is the moment when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And in order for you not to forget the word of the Holy Spirit, jot it down. Jot it down. Because we are a very forgetful people. Okay? You cannot remember everything, especially upon one hour talking. Okay? So, Jesus said that the pagan people recite their memorized prayer. They memorize, they memorize, they memorize, repeating the prayer again and again. But that is not the real prayer. Okay? Because prayer is not a recitation of your memorized. Okay? Memorize uh, words to be uttered unto God. But prayer is a communication. It is your discussion. It is a moment for you to speak up and allow God to speak up to you also. All right? Jesus said, whatever you ask, the prayer in my name, he will give you. So if that is true, how come that I did not, I did not receive many? <laughs> All right? Okay, so look at that. That is the title of our message today. The prayer of the righteous. Okay, the righteous man and woman. So this should be the prayer. And you have to focus on the righteous. Okay, the righteous in the eyes of the Lord can be seen from the Bible. So our message this morning is, number one, we are commanded to pray. The Lord Jesus told us to pray. The disciples told us to pray. The prophets told us to pray. The leaders, the pastors, the missionaries, all of them, they are commanded us to pray. Okay? In James chapter 5, 13, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing song of praise. If is anyone among you sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. To pray, to pray, to pray. It's always let them pray, let them pray, let them pray. Joy, understand what is the meaning of pray. So in modern language, it is discussion. Okay? Let them discuss it with the Lord. That's the meaning of the word prayer. Okay, it is discussing. It is not just uttering. It is not just reciting. Okay? It is something that you will be telling to God and then listen. Listen unto God. So this is a message of James about prayer. He said that in time of trouble, you pray. In time of sickness, you pray. We need to pray for protection. We need to pray for guidance. We need to pray for success. We need to pray for many things. You need to pray for yourself. You need to pray for your family. You need to pray for your loved ones. You need to pray for your community, for your church, for your leaders, for president, for your country, for your friends, and pray for your enemies. This is what the Bible said. What is that? Baka may nasusunog na dyan. But in most of the time, my brother and sisters, we were, we were told to pray, but we don't receive answer from our uh, prayer request. Real answer, real result. Okay, have you experienced that? We don't receive, but as I have said, there are more prayer requests. If you will count your prayer requests and you will count your answered prayer, there are more prayer requests than answered prayer. But we don't bother about this. There are times that we feel that God is not listening to you. I, I, I think God is not listening to me. Okay? So we don't see the real result and our expectation does not meet. I'll give you this picture here in New York City. We always hear this. Okay, we see troubles in the television, in the internet, news, killing, shooting, robbing, killing, shooting, robbing. And then what did the leader said? Our prayers for the victims and families. Do you think God listened to those utterances? President will say, 
we pray for the families. The governor said, we pray for the families. We pray for the victims. Okay? Our consolation for the victims. My question is, Lord, do you listen to the prayer of the people? And now, how about me? Do you listen to my prayer? Do you listen to my prayer? All right? These are our supporting verses in prayers. Okay? First Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. James 5.16, effective, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. John 16, 23, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. In 1 John 5, 14, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. These are promises that we quoted when we pray, and yet most of the time it didn't happen. Is that the real things? I'm talking about the reality. I'm not talking to spiritual here. But this is the real thing. And we have to understand it. We have to face it because this is the truth and we are all growing. And if there are disappointments in you, you need to understand what is in the mind of God. Now something will ask, somebody will ask, maybe, I am missing something here. Maybe you are missing something in the prayer, my brother and sisters. Okay? Maybe you are praying, you are quoting verses, you claim all of these verses in you, and yet you have missed something. Maybe you missed something. And that's one thing that we will be talking about, being a righteous person. Okay, as a righteous person, because all of these are promises by Jesus to the righteous people. Okay, that's why the prayer of the righteous avails much. Now, what is the meaning of righteous as far as God is concerned? Okay, you can quote this in your prayer. You can come and look like Christian, but behind this is problematic. All right, so this morning, my brother and sisters, let us offer, because sometimes the most important is the most ignored and overlooked. Sa Tagalog, kami na o overlook po tayo. Maybe we are ignoring something that is the most important and the key as far as answered prayer is concerned. All right, that's why we want this, our church. We want you to have your abundance from God. Okay, that's number one. Okay, prayer. And then number two, prayer according to his will. According to his will. Okay, so Elijah, according to the Bible, Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. So you can see that in these two verses, James tells us that Elijah was only ordinary human being like you and me. He was just an ordinary person, but when Elijah prayed, God answered his prayer and it's two times when he said no really God agreed with him when he said yes God agreed with him and according to James Elijah is just like you and me he was a righteous person he was a believer like you and me and if you believer this is what he wants to tell us if you believers will be acting like Elijah you will understand that God listens and answers prayer. If you will be acting like Elijah, and if you will understand the meaning of the prayer of the righteous. When I learned this, wow, I was so happy. And I realized that everything, all of my prayer requests had been answered by God 100%, my brother and sisters. It is not 
God answers my prayer 100% because I have learned the meaning of this passage. Okay? So it's not, my brother, huh? it's not that you are prayerful because there are many prayerful persons who are wicked persons also. Even though you are a prayerful person, but you do not know the will of God, your utterances are just recitation. You are only reciting the verses. You are only talking like an empty symbols, and yet without knowing, without receiving everything, because you do not know the mystery of this. Okay, so what, Im what is the most important to us this morning is to understand this praise according to His will. God commands us to prayer, but God uh, wants us to understand prayer according to His will. According to His will. And what is the meaning of that? As I have said, God focuses so much on our heart. It is not on our prayer, my brothers and sisters. It is not in our prayer. God wants you to pray. But as you pray, be sure that you know what is the meaning of praying according to the will of the Father. All right? Do you understand this? And this is something that we always ignore in our prayer. That's why prayer warriors, you need to know this. Prayer warriors and prayer intercessors, it's not how beautiful is your recitation of prayer. Okay? Okay, even though you write it and you memorize it and you, you, you utter it like you are doing the extemporaneous speech, it is nothing to God. The most important to God is according to His will. And this is what I have learned on my prayer. And we want to discuss it this morning. And then later on you will realize that, yes, it is worthy to serve the Lord. It is worthy to serve our God. Okay. I'll give you an example. There are two people who prayed here. The Pharisees and the tax collector. The Pharisees, the Pharisee was a very, very powerful prayer warrior. Okay, look at the utterance of this guy. This is what the Lord said in Luke 18, 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed because he's a prayer warrior. <laughs> prayer does with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like this person, someone sitting beside me. <laughs> Who is that person sitting beside you? <laughs> he is an extortioner. He is unjust. He is adulterer. Or even as this tax collector. Okay, that's how he prayed. Oh, and that's how he prayed. And yet he was a prayer warrior. <laughs> a prayer intercessor. <laughs> All right? Okay, so, and then look at verse 12. And uh, here is another prayer. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Okay, so those are prayer. And then, and the tax collector is standing apart of, would not so much as raise his, his eyes to heaven, but he bit, but beat his breast saying, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this is what the Lord Jesus said. This is the answer of Jesus. I tell you, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the prayer warrior. Or not the prayer warrior, but the one who prayed like the Pharisees. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. What did we learn from this passage? Okay, prayer is not just talking. That's what I was telling you a while ago. Prayer is the attitude of the heart. And the attitude of the heart is not only one week. It should be consistent. You need to be consistent with God that sometimes you are hyper and sometimes you are lower. Discuss, I mean, uh, establishing relationship with your spouse 
or with the church or with the community, you need to be consistent. Okay? And your relationship with God should be consistent. Do you say amen to that? And you have to do it 100%. You should know your responsibilities, my brother and sisters. Not only physical responsibilities, but also your spiritual responsibilities to God. Okay, that's why God, uh, Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So anything that Caesar requires, you have to give it. But give to God what is for God. It is not Jesus doesn't talk about money. Jesus talk about your heart, the attitude of the heart. And if you will give 100% your heart to God, for sure you can discern and you can understand if this request will be answered by God or not. The reason why we have so much disappointment and we have unanswered prayer because we always presented to God something that God doesn't want for us. And we want God to listen to us. We don't check ourselves. Is it for God? Is it for the glory of God? Or this is only for my personal desire? Okay? Give you an example to Noah. According to God, let's listen for this and let us learn from this. Because according to, what is that? According to his will. And the word according has been mentioned in the Bible several times. According, okay? In Noah 6.14, God said to Noah, make, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and it's height 30 cubits. And then let's move on in verse 22. Then Noah did according to all. Excuse me, that God commanded him, so he did. It is not just obedience, it is not just prayer, it is not just utterances, but it is obedience, just it should be according to the desire of God. Do you understand this? That's one. That's why God saved Noah from the destruction because Noah performed the commandment of God according to his will. Amen? And this is according to the will of God. All right, another one. God commanded Abraham to offer his son. In verse 22, uh, chapter 22 of Genesis, verse 1, I came to pass after three after these things that God tested Abraham. Abraham didn't know that he will be tested by God. And it could be true to you, my brother and sister. Because God will not tell you that he will test you. Okay? According to this passage, God tested Abraham. But Abraham didn't know that he is under testing. And sometimes you will be in a situation without knowing that you are under testing. That's why all you need to do is just do it according to the will of God. Whether you are under testing or not under testing, you do not know. Now, always remember that you are doing it because you want to obey the Lord, whether you are under testing or not. Amen? And this one, God said to Abraham, Abraham, here I am. Abraham said, then verse 2, then God said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. So this is an obedience. It is an obedience because God said to Abraham, Abraham, bring your son and offer him to me. The way the king of the Canaanites do it with their firstborn son. It is just like uh, brother uh, Carlo, you have to offer Gabe to me. Or sometimes, you know, sometimes those who had this uh, 
yung nakunan, miscarriage, I always tell them, don't be disappointed because they are all your offering to God. Maybe God wants you to offer. And whatever happened, you must rejoice because this is for the glory of God always. Maybe you are under testing or not. Whatever it may be, it is always under the hand or it is in the hand of God. And then look at verse 12. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. So in other words, as God commanded him to do, he obeyed 100% to God. Because God is testing the heart of Abraham. Why he has to test the, the, the heart of Abraham? Because Abraham was chosen by God, my brothers and sisters, like you and me. And yet Abraham was not 100% serious to God. Okay? We will have a series for that. I think two years ago, I speak about this when we were still under a uh, pandemic. We talk about God called Abraham, and then, God, and then Abraham went to Egypt when there was a famine in the land. Instead of believing in the promise of God to stay in the land, Abraham went to Egypt because he was afraid of the famine. Where is your faith, Abraham? When I told you to do this and to stay here, you have to stay. But what Abraham did was he went to Egypt because he was afraid of the famine. Instead of putting his trust to God, he went to Egypt because there are food in Egypt. And then when he was in Egypt, what happened? Instead of saying, she is my wife, he said, she is my sister. And in some passages there, my brother and sisters, in Genesis, he said, Sarah, wherever we go, tell every people that I am your brother and you are my sister. Is that okay to God? To live a, a, a life of lying? And yet you are already called by God. Okay? So God has to put him in another test to, to, to check if he is now faithful to God. And if you, my brother and sisters, if you will play fight God, there will be a time that God will put you in a test to the point of either your death or the death of your loved ones. Just to tell you that God wants to purify your hearts and soul. This is a promise. You cannot play fire with the Lord. And that is the meaning of righteous in the eyes of God. All right? So you have to understand, my brother and sister, I pray that you understand our message this morning. Look at I, uh, uh, Hezekiah. I will give you this one. Huh? In 2 Chronicles 32, 31, this is the story of Hezekiah. However, regarding the ambassador of the princes of Babylon, whom they sent to Hezekiah to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land, God withdrew from him. Look at that. God withdrew his support to Hezekiah in order to test him that he might know all that was in the heart of Hezekiah. Okay, it is just like you are there in a situation, okay? Then you are not fully 100% solid committed to God. And if you are not 100% support to God, if you have an evil things, let's say you are, you want to do something, but there is no 100% commitment to God, God will not support your ministry until you realize, okay, God will allow failure in you. God will allow failure to each, to, our, to us, to, to, your, to your project, until you realize that, oh, I need to be 100% committed to God. It may happen to you, it may happen to me, because what God requires from us is 100% righteousness or 100% obedience to the Lord. In Psalm 51, 6, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts you will make to me known wisdom. My brothers and sisters, Hezekiah was a good man. Okay? Listen to this. Hezekiah was a good man. 
Okay? When he got sick, he prayed to God, and then God answered his prayer, and God added 15 more years. Do you remember that? Yes. And then, here comes the Babylonian. The Babylonian came to Hezekiah, and then the Babylonian said to Hezekiah, Oh, we thank God because you have been healed from your sickness. And then what did Hezekiah do? What did he do? Did he say, praise the Lord, thank God for, for uh, healing me? He didn't do that. You know what did he say? Come, I will show you our accomplishment. I will show you our ammunitions and all of, uh, of the powers of our God. He never gave glory to our God because his desire and his heart is not 100 fully committed to God or surrendered to our God. That's the reason why it says here that God withdrew from him in order to test him that he might know all that was in the heart of Hezekiah. Okay? And here, which is our supporting verse, you desire truth in inward parts, and in the hidden parts you will make me to know wisdom. Okay, so my brother and sisters, my message, our message from the Lord this morning is, I need to be solid to God. I need to be 100% committed to God. If I want my project, if I want my plans to be supported, to receive support from the Lord, I need to understand what is the will of God in such and such situation. All right? Another one is Moses. Moses was commanded by God to, to build the tabernacle. Look at this tabernacle, 26.1. You shall make the tabernacle with ten uh, curtains of fine woven li linen and blue purple. Purple and scarlet thread. With artistic design of cherubims, you shall weave them. The length of its curtain shall be 28 cubits, and the width of its curtain 4 cubits, and every one of the curtains shall be the same measurement. And then look at verse Exodus 25, 40. And see to it that you will make them according to the pattern which was shown to you in the mountain. Third, Exodus 39, 42. According to all that the Lord had commanded to Moses, so the children of Israel did all the work. Okay? So we have several passages that says that the people of God did according to the will of God. Noah did according to the will of God. Abraham did according to the will of God. Moses did according to the will of God. And this is what God requires from his people. And look at this in 1 John chapter 5.14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Okay, now what is the meaning of that confidence? Now, this is the confidence. The confidence here is this. If you have the right attitude, okay, it is not you need to pray. My brother, God wants you to pray, but you need to check your personal heart. This is what the Bible said. Okay? God requires us to pray. But in your prayer, you need not to ignore the attitudes of your heart. Okay? Because if you ignore the most important key, if you will abandon the most important key, even though you pray every day, your prayer will be listened, will be heard by God, but God will always answer no. Why? Why will he give something that will destroy your faith? Why will he give something that will destroy your commitment to God? Do you think God will give you something that will be harmful to you? My brothers, come on, listen to me. Listen to me and open your spirit. Will you give a, a match and, uh, and gas to, your, to, to, to DJ? If DJ asks, Mommy, give me matches. Mommy, give me gas. Will you give that to DJ? And if you too, will you, uh, will you, uh, do you think God will give something that will destroy your life? And uh, something that will destroy. Now, do you see the future, the effect of your prayer request? No. But God knows it. 
That's why the answer of God there is no. And that is an answered prayer. If God did not give your request and say no, it means it is still an answered prayer. But the only thing is, the answer is no. Okay? Now, how come that we were required by, by the Bible uh, to pray and pray and pray and pray? But be sure that when you pray, let us say God did not, let us say God did not answer your prayer. What should be the, uh, the attitude for that? Should we not stop praying for that specific prayer request? You have to continue praying, my brother and sisters. But you have to check your heart. You need to check your heart. Amen? Because if you will be able to understand this, and God saw that your, your heart has been changed, and you are now having a good attitude towards this, God will, God will give the prayer request. I've been praying for the church for many years now, and yet we do not have it. Now I'm checking my heart. Lord, maybe it will give pride in me. Maybe it will, it will cause us to be, to be proud. So I always check my heart with this. I always check my heart with this. And what is your prayer request that you have been waiting for many, many years? Maybe you have prayer request that until now you have not received it. The attitude there, the most important thing is not, number one, do not stop praying. Continue to pray if that is what your desire. But number two, you need to pray that God change the attitude of your prayer. And then you can, answer, you can say, this is the prayer of the righteous man. Because the intention of God for holding all the prayer requests is to change our heart. It is not because God doesn't like to give it to you. In fact, God wants to give it to you. But when he gives that prayer request, can God trust you 100% that you will not sway on your faith? All right? Okay, listen to me. If God allows you to win that $1 billion lotto, who won that, Brother Edgar? Did you play? <laughs> If God gave you that, do you think you will still commit your life in this ministry? Come on, tell me. Be honest, right? If God gives you one, let us say $100 million, probably immediately you will go to Cancun. You will go to Europe. You will go to Madrid, Spain, Vienna, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, to the point that I'm busy, Pastor. Why? Because I want to spend my $100 million, which is a blessing from God. Do you understand? <coughs> Do you understand? Okay. Do you understand the meaning of this? That is the reason why God do not give something that will destroy your faith, especially when it comes to monetary issue. That's the reason why King David said, Lord, don't give me poverty. I might commit sin. I might rob other people. But don't give me riches. Because if I have so much riches, richness, I might forget you. So if you have paycheck to paycheck, it's all right. <laughs> Amen. Give glory to God. So if God gives you, how much is your salary, Sister, sister Margo? $2,000 a week? Uh, okay. So if you are receiving this, it's okay. As long as, God, King David said, as long as I am not begging in the street. You know, sometimes if I see these people, the bum, Pastor Michael told me, Pastor, there's so many bum in Chicago. So many, Pastor Michael, so many bum in, in this area. And I always pray to God, thank you, Lord, that I am not a bum. Thank you, Lord, that I have this. Thank you, Lord, that I have a good family. I have this. Thank you, Lord, for satisfying my physical and spiritual needs. Do you understand this? Amen. 
Okay now, as I go, let's go back to our prayer request. What is that prayer request that you have been waiting from God for so many, many years now? Okay? Now, check your heart, not the prayer request. Check your heart. Maybe that is the key that you have been ignoring for many years. Maybe some people are, oh, Pastor, I think I need to pray more. I think I need to commit. Lord, I will commit my life to the church if you will answer my prayer. No, 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 no. God will not be pleased with your talking. He is pleased if you will desire to change your heart. Then we can say the prayer of the righteous avails much. Because whether it is wait, yes or no, it means answered prayer. Okay? Because we always look for material things. Lord, give me laptop. <clears throat> Immediately, answered prayer. Then, Lord, give me cell phone. iPhone 16. All right? All right? <laughs> now, there, is, there are hindrances, my brothers. Okay, this is the opposite. Okay, so according to our passage, number one, we need to pray always. So don't, don't stop praying. But number two, you need to pray according to His will. Okay, how do you know this according to His will? According to the attitude of the heart. That is the key, my brothers and sisters. So don't ignore that when you pray, when you kneel down before the presence of God, when you open your Bible, look always to the attitude of the heart. And if God answered your prayer, don't post immediately that, ah, the Lord bless me, the Lord bless me, and then the whole world can see that God is blessing you because you are too proud like the Pharisee. You know, that's why I always tell other sisters, please stop posting all your socializing in this. You are blessed, but some people are getting this stumble to you. All right? Especially if you are in the ministry. I am not antisocial, but be sure all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. It is, not, it is wrong to say, I don't care to other people. Only the devil is saying that. That's why for people who say, I don't care with people, other people say, as long as I'm in social media, no, 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 no. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said all things are permissible. Yes, but not all things are profitable because that will destroy you and your future ministry if you are careless. All right? Pastor, sobra ka naman. Pati yun naman Facebook, pinakikialaman mo. Ganun talaga because God wants you to be a righteous man and woman of God. Amen? And what is the role of your leader? What is the role of your purpose? And what is the role of all these verses from the Bible? Okay? They are important. Okay, so let's, yes, my brother and sisters, let us always check our hearts. Guard your heart always. Guard your heart always. So, so this is the opposite of disobedience. This is the opposite of um, the, those who do not listen to the voice of God. Disobedience is the hindrance in prayer. Okay? Even though you pray, 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 and come to the church, attend the services, but if there are disobedience inside the heart, I don't think God will listen to the prayer. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray to each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. So confess, 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 confess is the requirements here. It is not just pray one another. It says confess. So it means there is a warning, there is a limitation here. Okay? We have many failures and disappointments in our prayer life. Maybe Christians are struggling in this aspect of life. But do not worry, my brothers and sisters, okay? Do not worry. Because God gives us opportunity to change. Change is the most important. 
those who are not willing to change will continue to be like that until the end of our life. And the sample of this is King Saul. In 1 uh, Samuel 15, 2, I will punish Amalek for what he did in Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and I will destroy all that they have and do not spare them. This is what God said to King Saul. But kill both men and women, infant and nursing children, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. This is what God said. Kill all. Oh my God, what kind of, what kind of God is that? Even the babies has to be destroyed and killed. Okay, how do we answer this? How do we react to these uh, attributes of God? The meaning of this is, if God will judge people, you cannot say, Lord, forgive me. Judgment has been passed. Because Amalek has been judged by God, and nobody can stop it. Whether they are family, whether they are children, or senior citizen, or sick people, when God said, judge them, it means judge them. You cannot, that's an attribute of God. You cannot change the mind of God when he pronounces his judgment. And in this case, God wants Saul to destroy all the Amalekites because Saul was the God's instrument. And then look at verse 9. But Saul and the people spare a, spared a gog and the best of the sheep, the ox and the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. Remember that the command of God was to kill all, destroy all. But King Saul said, only the, the, the despise, only the, the, the worthless, only the worthless. But the fat and all the beautiful animals put it on the side. Okay? Now, now, I think God will be happy because we did not kill those beautiful and fatted animals. But look at verse 29. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Wow. We know what happened. We are familiar with this. We discussed it before. I preach about this, about obedience. And when we say, to, when we say obedience to God, God requires 100% obedience. The same thing that Noah did according to the will of God. The same thing that Abraham did according to the will of God. The same thing that Moses did according to the will of God. But for Saul, he did not do it according to the will of God. That's why on the moment of that, God removed the throne from Saul. And that's the reason why people who are already there in the ministry, okay, already there in the ministry, and then suddenly they will feel, I don't want to do it anymore. And then they will say, I will resign. My brothers and sisters, you have to understand that obedience to God is more important than prayers. You can pray and you can pray and pray. You can attend the Bible studies again and again. You can listen to the message of the Lord. But there is no 100% solid heart to God. I doubt you will receive everything from the Lord. Do you understand our message this morning, my brother and sister? Amen. First Samuel says here, Obedience is better than your prayer. Obedience is better than sacrifices. Submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Okay? So this is the God that we know. He is the God that we know from the Bible. Okay? God requires us to pray. God wants you to pray. In, God, in fact, God wants you to quote all the verses. Okay? Everything that we have said this morning are all approved to God. 
You need to pray. You need to attend. You need to listen. You need to support the church. You need to worship the Lord. You need to pray to God. You need to praise and so worship to God. But don't forget what is the key in this message. What is the key? Attitude of the heart. Attitude, my brother and sisters. It is not only the obedience. Okay? You can obey outwardly, but still you are complaining inside. Like the Pharisee. The Pharisee was very, very obedient, and yet you're complaining. Our message last week, our message is serving God. Uh, 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 Malachi, uh, the Lord heard the voices of the people. The people are serving God. The people are offering praises to God. They are offering animal sacrifices to God. And yet God said to prophet uh, uh, Malachi, Malachi, tell your people, I heard the complaints of the people. The prayers are important. Our sacrifices are important. Our offerings are important. Everything that you do are accepted to God. But be sure that the attitude of the heart is 100% to God. That's why every morning, every evening, before you sleep and after you wake up from the... Always, Lord, how is my heart this morning? Always check with this. Because if you will have that attitude, everything will be given to you by God. Yes, no, or wait. And then you can understand, God has answered my prayer request. You can see that this prayer request is only for my personal. Because God will open your heart to that. Okay? And this is what I have learned for my 32 years in the ministry. I have so many disappointments in my five, first five and ten years in the ministry. Because I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want God to listen to me. And then later on, when I have learned the mystery of prayer, I always force my ears and hearts to listen to God. Force yourself to listen to God. Don't force God to listen to you. Force yourself. Because the attitude is the most important to God. It is not you quote the verses. It is not you committed, praise the Lord. They are all part. Okay? But the attitude of the heart is the most important to God. Then you can say, the prayer of the righteous avails much. Then you can say, I am righteous in the eyes of the Lord because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then number two, the Lord has changed my heart. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's give glory. But before that, let's have my conclusion. Jesus said, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love pray standing in the synagogue and on the corner of the street that they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have the reward. But you, so it means it's an answered prayer. You have already the reward. It's an answered prayer. The only thing is you do not know. All right? But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have, sh and when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees, who sees in secret will reward you openly. So men pleasers is the enemy of righteousness. Remember that. This prayer is our Lord's, is part of the, the, the um, Sermon at the Mount. But Jesus Christ said that we need to check the heart always because God rewards those who are doing it secretly. My brother and sister, this morning, huh? this morning, okay, as we, because I, I, I want you to serve God with the right attitude. Don't serve God out of convenience only, but serve God in the attitude of our hearts. Okay? Sometimes uh, all of us will continue to serve God. As I have said, I've been serving God for 32 years. When I was, uh, show, you know, in our Bible study yesterday in Maryland, I show all my pictures 
Okay, my pictures when I was pastoring a church in Saudi Arabia in 1991, and then my pastoral ministry in the Philippines, my pastoral ministry in Israel, in Spain, in New York, in Massachusetts, in Atlanta, Chicago, and then in Maryland, I see, wow, I was handsome before. But later on, I became deteriorating slowly, deteriorating. But God, I, as I've said, for the past 32 years, I have struggled so much. My struggle is, how will I please God? And that is my struggle. And I believe that is also your struggle. How will I please God? And it is only through understanding the meaning of prayer. Okay, the attitude of the hearts and the continuous doing the work of God. Do not stop. Okay, because God is not yet through with you. God is not finished yet with you. There are more things to be changed. Okay? There are more things to be changed in you. That's why don't say, I'm done, I'm this, it is me, it is me, I don't care about you, it is me, it is me. That is satanic version. It is Satan who always say, I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Because Satan has no space for change. So the people who say they are Christians, and yet they don't care about the environment, pamangkin yan ni Satanas. They are knees and, uh, and uh, the nephews of Satan. So don't follow this. Because this is not the way of Jesus Christ. Let's praise unto God. Have a word.